Hi there, I want to share the inspirations behind my Brave collection. Why would I call a collection Brave? Well, usually when I go to create a collection for fabric, I have already gathered for weeks and months photographs, um, drawings, inspiration pieces, whether it's fine art, fashion, or whatever it is, and I've piled it all into this folder. And I've started basically, I'm like halfway there on the narrative and also the imagery on the art. But I started thinking about how I always prepare so much for a collection, but there's other things that I do creatively that I don't prepare a thing for. And I wanted to really capture that process of making in the Brave collection, which is why I called it Brave. For instance, if I'm going to do a mural in my house or in my daughter's bathroom or anywhere else, I have a tendency just to pile up the paint and the brushes and the water and I just start. I just start painting on the wall and I don't have any idea of what's gonna happen until I put that brush on the wall. So I really wanted to start this collection that way, totally cold with nothing but whatever's going on in my mind and in my hands while I'm making the art. Um, so the actual starting point for me on this collection was a little forethought, and that was this piece. It's called Sunseekers. And this is actually kind of based on a mural that I did in my daughter's bathroom a few years ago in my old house. And I loved the form so much. They just came together really beautifully in a way that I did not think. They're not based on any real flowers just lots of beautiful details and vines and geometrics that I really enjoy just kind of getting lost in the process. That comes with that black background as well as this pretty kind of sky blue background as well. Lots of really pretty details to use in there for fussy cutting, for garments, patchwork, you name it. This one is called Bell Ringer. I just love these little kind of, they almost remind me of um, cupcake cups, those little folded papers. Um, but it's really a floral vine, really fun to cut up this way, this way, a pretty tangerine color, this jade color. And I liked that one so much, I decided to also do a larger scale and then alternate the background so it sort of creates a stripe. I called this scales, it reminds me of like fish scales or other parts of nature that have sort of a repetitive and tiny, almost scallop design, but an imperfect scallop with lots of different edges and spikes and points to it. This is called Petaluva, and I named it that because you can sort of see this butterfly hiding in this floral shape, and the word for butterfly in Greek is Petaluva, but it has this very sort of art deco feel to the arrangement. And this is a really nice naturalistic one because so many of these forms are just completely made up in my mind. I wanted to include some more natural earthy tones in the collection as well. And this is called Giggle, which it just looks like the little flowers are kind of like all bumping off of each other and giggling and having fun. We have that one in three colorways. This is a really nice vintage sort of avocado green on an almost black but more purpley kind of charcoal in the background. And this one, the black on gray, really makes me think of like a flocked velveteen wallpaper. Very vintage colors. This is called Surprise. I think I called it that because I really didn't know that I was gonna make this as I started it. <laughs> and this reminds me of, again, little, maybe I was hungry when I did this collection. This reminds me of little icing dollops on a really um, intensely decorated cake. And you can see those little bell ringer florals showing up again. Really fun to cut up. Love this colorway. Very springy and summery and bright. And this is sort of a floral tonal, but also like a geometric. It's called pruned. Nicely pruned bushes and perfect little squares. This is lovely as a background for an applique. Um, little vignette or just to put into blocks. More tonal. One of my favorite um, color combinations. 
that hot pink on a kind of a caramely brown background. And those flowers aren't quite white. They're a really creamy, creamy, buttercream white. And this is another geometric and really fun to cut up in lots of ways called Labyrinth. Lots of pretty little details, all hand drawn and packed into these shapes and spaces here. Almost little leopard print as well. And then we have it in a deep kind of jewel tone, but also some naturalistic sort of caramel and toffee colors there as well. So this collection will be shipping in May of 2023. And along with that, we are also gonna be shipping two other exciting things. First of all, look at this gorgeousness. That surprise print, surprise, it also became a backing. This is a little bit more simplistic view of that print and cut and um, set on a very dark background. This is 108 inches wide, but I print all my 108 inch wide on a more standard quilting cotton instead of the sateen one. So the texture is very similar to the standard quilting cotton. So beautiful opportunities to use up all the scraps for the front of your quilts and patchwork as well. And at the same time as Brave is shipping, we have put together some new colors and pieces for my Love Always collection. So while this is part of the Love Always library, it is colored and designed to work really beautiful with the Brave collection. So excited to introduce Echinacea on a pale background. We've never done that before. Um, you know this print well, but I thought we should put some sunlight into this design. And I'm really happy with how it came out. We're doing it in four new colors. Absolutely adore this sunny yellow one, this pretty grape colored one. Look at this. I'm so excited about this one. This just reminds me of Marschino cherries, which I really love. And you remember the in town print from the Bright Eyes collection. It has been such a wonderful print to use. It sort of behaves like a plaid, but not really. And this one is kind of like an, a black and white version of that, which is really grounding for patchwork and applique. And then a very pale, but still colorful one called Sky. And for those of you that have been following my fabrics for years and years, you'll remember the cathedral print from Bohemian, which I later reprinted in Good Folks. Um, this is a little bit smaller scale but we have introduced it in four different colors. Again, just like that small in-town plaid, this small geometric really is a beautiful tonal. These are the kinds of things I tend to use instead of solids, but also a beautiful background um, for applique. So very exciting release for May of 2023. And of course I'm doing a club. This big, beautiful quilt behind me is the Brave Quilt, and that's gonna be my quilt club for 2023. Um, I'll be showing you a little bit more about that soon, but um, lots to look forward to. Cannot wait to share all the projects that we've worked on for this, including this five-month club, which begins in June, ends in October, if you've never done that one with me before, I would really encourage you to try this one because it's a lot simpler than it looks. Mostly patchwork with just a tiny bit of applique, videos, templates, booklets, and everything that you need, including me, to help you finish the quilt. So thanks for having a look.